Hello and welcome back to ADK Aquatics and today we are talking about a common phenomenon in the aquarium hobby, fungus growing on driftwood. Chances are if you have put some driftwood in your tank after a few days or weeks it went from setting off your scape to making it look downright nasty. In this video we will address several aspects of this phenomena. Why fungus grows on driftwood, if it is harmful to the livestock of your aquarium, how to prevent it from growing on the wood in the first place, and finally, how to remove it once it starts. There are multiple types of fungus that can grow on driftwood. They come in different colors, from white to dark gray, and everything in between. Most of this fungus is caused by either different types of bacterial funguses or molds. These are usually trapped in spores inside the driftwood itself. This fungus grows because of the natural process of the wood being broken down once it's been placed in the aquarium. The wood provides new surface area for bacteria to grow on and it provides organic material, carbohydrates specifically, for the fungus to feed on. This phenomenon can be observed to a lesser extent if you overfeed and some food gets left uneaten at the bottom of the tank and it will eventually get fungus up and dissolve into the substrate. This increase of surface area and nutrients is the main cause of fungus growth on driftwood and other surfaces. Now for the next question, is fungus dangerous to my livestock? And the answer is yes and no. The fungus itself does not have any direct harm on the livestock of your aquarium, but while it is breaking down the wood, it can produce nitrogenous waste such as ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate that your beneficial bacteria might not be able to handle. This might cause harm to your fish, as many of you know, that nitrogenous waste is not good for your fish. And this is why I would advise that you monitor your parameters while your driftwood is fungused up. And if you do this, your fish should be fine. Now it's time for the third question. How can I prevent the driftwood from fungusing up in the first place? Well, if you want to avoid this whole driftwood ordeal, entirely there is one way you can do this but it might not be successful every time this method is boiling the driftwood i have read several articles and forum threads on this and it seems that boiling driftwood can kill off most of the fungal spores if done properly you should boil the driftwood for one to two hours to make sure you have the highest chance of sterilizing the wood However, after looking through several forum threads, I saw that some people had boiled their driftwood and still had fungus growing on their pieces of wood. I don't know how, they bo how long they boiled their wood for, <clears throat> and for all I know they did it completely incorrectly. My conclusion about boiling wood to prevent fungus is that if done properly, it can work, but, it, but I wouldn't consider it a 100% end-all be-all easy fix. Removing the fungus can be done in many ways. Some are natural and others are anything but. The first way I'm going to discuss is the easiest and most straightforward way to deal with this problem. Doing nothing. That's right. You can get rid of the fungus by doing absolutely nothing about it. As I said earlier, the fungus is caused by an excess of surface area and nutrients for the fungus bacteria to feed on and that is part of the wood's natural decomposition cycle. Because of this, once the fungus uses up all the nutrients, it will slowly die off and disappear. This natural cycle can range from taking just a few days to several weeks, depending on how big the piece of wood is and how much nutrients are stored inside of it. Perhaps you don't have several weeks and you can't bear to look at the fungus for one second longer. There are several ways to get rid of this fungus quicker. One of these is to introduce a fish or invertebrate to eat the fungus. 
There are several different species of fish and invertebrates that will eat the fungus on your driftwood. However, I only advise getting an animal to clean up the fungus if you actually want to keep that fish and you think you will enjoy keeping it. This is a big problem for many people as they get a fish to do a certain job, like clean up algae or something, rather than getting the fish because they actually enjoy keeping it. This often leads to the fish being neglected and not given proper, not given proper care. With that warning out of the way, here are some animals that can eat fungus on driftwood. 1. Bristlenose Plecos Bristlenose Plecos are one of the most well-known algae-eating fish in the hobby, and they like munching down on fungus as well. These fish should go in at least a 20 gallon tank, and if you put them in there they will go to town on the fungus. But you need to feed them food other than the fungus of course, they cannot live only on fungus and algae and other naturally occurring things that in your aquarium that they like to eat. Number two is Siamese algae eaters. I don't really have much to say about them as they are really similar to Bristlenose plecos with pretty much the same size but with different body shape and color. They need to go in a larger tank in my opinion as they are more active swimmers than Bristlenose plecos as Bristlenose plecos mostly just um, latch onto the side of the tank or on some decorations for most of the time while Siamese algae eaters can be seen swimming in the water column. Other than that, it's pretty much the same deal as Bristlenose Plecos. Put it in there and watch it demolish the fungus. 3. Autosynclus, another algae eater, but they are much smaller than the other algae eaters mentioned on this list. They can fit in your smaller 10 to 20 gallon range that the other two can't. Also, Autosynclus do like to be in a group, so I would advise getting at least two of them. Autosynclus are often considered to be a more advanced fish, as they sometimes just refuse to eat the food you put in there no matter what, and beginners are usually told to avoid them. If you think you can handle keeping them, and you want a group of bottom dwellers that will eat up your fungus, get some Autosynclus. 4. Shrimp Many shrimp species are regarded as voracious algae eaters and will eat fungus on driftwood as well. They are also good for any fungus that you have in nano tanks as they can fit in tanks the size of 2.5 gallons and less which other fish can't fit in. Shrimp are also good as they produce much less waste than the other algae eating fish I have mentioned in this video who are notorious ammonia producers. 5. Snails Snails are one of the best waste eaters in the aquarium hobby. Despite many people thinking they are just a pest, they can be really beneficial and cool members of your aquariums. This holds true for their ability to eat fungus. If you have a fungus outbreak in your aquarium, I'd recommend throwing in some snails and watching them chip away at the problem. There are other fish that can eat fungus, but I don't have time to go through all of them. Some of these fish are mollies, other bottom dwelling catfish, and more. But there is one other animal that can remove the fungus, and that animal is you. That's right, manually removing the fungus is a very good way to get rid of the problem. Because as Corey McElroy once said, the best cleaner fish is the aquarist. This is a very true statement similar to the timeless adage, if you want something done right, do it yourself. It's a much more surefire way to get the fungus gone by doing it yourself than leaving it up to some fish or invertebrate. No matter how effective they are, or no matter how effective people claim the fish to be at doing the job it supposedly does, just scrub the fungus off with a tooth rough or other algae removing device. But I will warn you, it is likely that the fungus will make a reappearance several times before it is completely gone. Some other methods are hydrogen peroxide, bleach, putting it in a salt solution, and Seachem XL. I haven't tried any of these methods, but I'm sure they'd work pretty well because bleach and hydrogen peroxide are pretty good at killing things. But I'd be careful using these methods because if they are done wrong, they could harm your fish as well. In conclusion, after researching this topic, I have come to the conclusion that fungus on driftwood, while unsightly, is completely natural and not very harmful to your fish and can be removed in a multitude of ways if it gets on your nerves too much. I hope this video was helpful and informative and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.